easy. Miss, you've not yet removed the those things. I must ask you to take them off at once. You know, you said you would. Listen, for two cents, I take off the whole outfit and sit out the summer in Central Park. How long you been serving time here, Walpole? Maisie, I must ask you to try to be a little... Oh, I've been the Ralston butler for 30 years. 30 years on the 17th of April. 30 years. Boy, have you taken your beating like a man. Say, who are those assorted nuts out of the pool, anyway? Maisie, I must rebuke you. These young people are Miss Abby's guests, her friends. You mustn't speak so disrespectfully of them. Listen, Walpole, I've spent my last 20 years learning how to spot phonies. So when the label reads imitation, why not say so out loud? You don't like them, do you? My dear, show mercy me. I don't know. I need that paycheck bad, but I'm beginning to think this is one of those times when money's too expensive. Yes, Maisie, uh, very good. You wish to see me, Miss Abby? Yes, I do. Your name is Maisie, isn't it? That's right. Ma'am. This is Miss Ralston, Miss Abigail. Oh, you're the sister. Ma'am. Yes. My brother told me how you happened to be here. Yes, ma'am. No, not ma'am, Miss Abigail. Oh, that isn't necessary, Walpole. Bob was to see that you had employment for two months at $25 a week. Wasn't that the arrangement? Well, I had it coming to me after what he put me through, and that was the judge's idea, too. There's the front door bell. Will you excuse me, Miss Abby? I think Judge Thatcher was perfectly right. But really, I can't expect you to do this sort of thing. It isn't fair to you or to my guests. So perhaps we can solve everything by paying you now in advance, and that'll leave you free to find something more suitable. Why don't you come out in plain English and say you want me out of here? Oh, really, that was... Listen, I told your brother it was a job or no dice. That happens to be the way I operate, lady, strange as it sounds. And when I put on this outfit, all I expected was $25 a week and halfway decent treatment in return for doing my best. But if that isn't good enough for you, just say so. I'll go with exactly what I brought here. Two dimes, a suitcase, and a talent for picking the jinxes. Oh, please. I only suggested the, the money because I thought you'd be happier with it that way. Oh, I'll bet. You came hot putting it up here from the pool, all worked up about making me happy. You came up here to pay off nature's mistakes so your guests wouldn't be embarrassed looking at her. Oh, please don't feel that way. Listen, maybe I don't know the ins and outs of being a maid, but that crowd of yours wouldn't be held over for a second week in some spots I've played. If they were rude to you, if we were rude, I'm sorry. Oh, skip it. Looking back on it, I guess I didn't behave so hot myself down there or just not of you. But your brother lost me a job yesterday. Today he's very swell and very sorry, and I thought the job would be okay. Now it's curdled on me. You can't blame me for being burned up. No, Maisie. I don't blame you a bit. I'd be burnt up myself. But don't go. I know just how you feel about not wanting to take the money without working for it. Really, I do. Yeah, well, maybe you do it that. But in eight weeks, I'd be a cinch to tangle with one of those comics down by the pool shore as fate. They'd give me that, well, darling, she's too, too laughable. I mean, really, and I'd give my right cross. Oh, Maisie, I'm sure that won't happen again. Here's an idea. Nora's been taking care of me. She's my personal maid. But she's very busy with the house so full. Won't you try that job? Well, being your personal dresser, you mean? Yes. I'm sure you'd find it pleasant. Well, I might give it a trial. If I do anything out of line, you just call me on it, and I'll do it right the next time. I know you will. Okay, Miss Abigail, it's a deal. Maisie, I'm very happy. Tell me. I want to rejoice, too. Oh, Link, dear. I want you to meet Maisie.